welcome to a super quick MI short here on the MI Gardener channel. I'm going to be showing you something really fun, really easy, and for mushroom lovers, it's really great. So, we're going to be doing a mushroom slurry, and it's going to actually be able to inoculate a compost pile. So, for gardeners, we always talk about mushroom compost, we always talk about fungally inoculated compost. It is so crucial and so beneficial to the, the basically the symbiotic relationship that plants have with the soil that it's going to make your plants so much better when it's just in the compost. The added benefit is if it goes long enough, sometimes you can have some what you consider blooms and that's going to actually give you an edible mushroom. Now note, I am not being held responsible for you ending up in A, the hospital, or B, a grave. So make sure you know how to identify mushrooms, please, because if you don't, that can be very, very dangerous. However, today I'm working with two different examples here, and we're going to be making them in the same slurry. So uh, two spawns is not going to hurt you at all uh, to, to do two different spawns, or you can do just one if you can only find one type of mushroom. In our case, we went to our local farmer's market, and for free, we were able to get mushrooms by simply asking the right people, and that is the produce department, or uh, in our case, we went to our farmer's market and asked the people selling the mushrooms, and I also went to our, farmers, uh, to our grocery store and asked the person running the produce department if they had any mushrooms that were either past their prime or broken. And so, in our case, we got two mushrooms here that, uh, I'm not sure what was wrong with this one, this came from our local farmer's market. This is a portobello mushroom, and portobellos are very delicious, super awesome in soups and uh, stuffing and salads. What you do with it is up to you, but I love them, they're so versatile. So we got some portobellos here. And we also have from our grocery store some past their prime little soft uh, oyster mushrooms. That's okay if they're past their prime. You're not eating them, you're using them in the garden, so that's fine. And a benefit of having them past their prime is oftentimes they've been able to open up just enough to let their spores become available for you to make in the slurry. So you have an example here of this portobello mushroom, and if you get your mushrooms and they're kind of closed up, and you can tell that all of the gills, the, the little things that look like fish kills, all of the gills are gonna be really close together, that means it's too immature yet. And what you can do is you can just set it in a damp, dark place for about 24 hours, and that will open up the mushroom and allow it to release its spores. What you can do then is then jump forward to this step, and you'll be ready. However, we're ready to make ours right now because the what you consider the cap, the top is the cap of the mushroom, has begun opening up, and it's increased the, the surface area of the mushroom and opened up those, those gills enough to let those spores out. So this one's ready. And this is a great example of, of two different types of uh, ways to colonize mushrooms. You have a case in which some of these mushrooms here, these, these oyster mushrooms, they've been harvested a little too low, and you actually have what people would consider roots, but mushroom growers would consider it mycelium. And the mycelium is actually little mini, well, mushroom roots, kind of, that go throughout and will actually colonize much quicker than the spores because they're actually growing. So you have a case in which you have a few uh, little chunks of mycelium still attached to this, and you also have the gills of the mushroom, which have millions and millions of spores. So the first thing also that you're going to need to know is that this does not always have a 100% success rate. I cannot guarantee that you're going to have uh, even a fungally inoculated compost because sometimes the conditions aren't right, sometimes um, the mushrooms are just too old, sometimes the spores have been radiated. I don't know what your conditions are, so I'm just warning you right now, give it a try multiple times. I like to do it at least five times to make sure that I have a really good fungally inoculated compost because one of those five times, I'm pretty sure you're going to get one to succeed. Uh, the next thing is you're going to need a sugar source. A sugar source is going to help the, the the spores of the mushrooms grow and begin to reproduce faster. So that's a good thing for you as well. The last thing you're going to need, or the second to last thing, is a blender, and also you're going to want some unchlorinated water. The reason is because you want the more spores, you want the most spores you can get. And chlorine can kill off some of those spores, so you just want to make sure that you have uh, the highest amount of spores possible. So anything that's going to kill off the spores is not recommended. Uh, also, Note, we went with unsulfured molasses. I don't know if you can find a sulfured molasses, but just get, like, uh, this is a, um, just a regular grandma's unsulfured molasses. Regular stuff you use in cooking. 
And that's going to make sure there's no sulfur in there, uh, which can raise the, the acidity. And uh, for all of you that don't know, mushrooms do not like a very acidic environment. So you want to make sure that the compost pile you have has not been amended with anything. Also, if you want to, you can have a higher success rate with sprinkling a little bit of lime or wood ash because a lot of times you'll have fungal blooms right after a forest fire. And that's because the, the forest drops a lot of ash and makes the pH able to be grown. So um, I like to keep my, my stuff just all natural. I just throw it right in the compost pile which has a pH of about seven so it's pretty good. Um, but you can add those wood ash or lime if you want. But I find all those mixing around and stuff is just too complicated. So do it if you want. All right, so let's get started here. I'm gonna pour the water in and then we're gonna just make it up. It's really simple. So stay tuned guys. All right, so we're going to just throw in our mushrooms. We've got our, our oyster mushrooms here. You can also wash this out because there are tons of spores. If you get in the container, there are tons of spores actually inside the the, uh, the lining of this container. So I'm gonna wash this out too, and that way I can have uh, the most spores possible. I'll do that in a little bit though, uh, after uh, this video. And then I'm just going to break this this portobello up here, this portobello, this portobello mushroom, and I'm going to drop that in there. And then we're just gonna blend this up. Just blend it up, and you're gonna be all set. And the very last thing that I thought I'd mention is that the blending process is actually going to aerate, and aeration is actually really good to help the spores multiply. So this is not going to hurt. Just keep blending to your heart's content, to your blue in the face, and it's gonna be great. We're already pretty much done, so I'm pretty satisfied here. This is a really nice, really nice little uh, milkshake here. Uh, and now we're ready to go pour this on the compost pile. So come on side, let's go do that. All right, so we're back at the compost pile in the woods here. This is a really well turned, aged compost. It's been sitting here for so many years and it's just a already cooled compost. So this is a great example of something that you want because you don't want it to be heating up. That will kill the mycelium. And so you want something that's going to be aged. It's going to be broken down already. It's really going to have a lot of um, organic matter and humus. Uh, and so this really nice black stuff is what you're looking for. And then uh, basically, also the last thing I was gonna point out is that if you're looking at uh, just harvesting mushrooms, this is a great thing to do is lay down if you have like a wood path, you want it to be obviously pretty shaded so you got a lot of, there's a lot of canopy, a lot of brush cover uh, because mushrooms don't like a whole lot of sunlight. So kind of a nice understory is great um, and that's going to give you a great place for mushrooms to colonize. Uh, but anyways, like I was saying though, this little path here is made of of uh, wood chips and that's a great other way to to get some mushrooms if you want to harvest mushrooms to eat is to put them just on like a side of a walk path or something to have wood chips but for our case today we're going to be inoculating this here compost pile and it's really as simple as this you're going to take your slurry here got your nice little slurry and you're just going to pour as much as you can all over the pile there and that's going to seep into the soil it's going to seep into the compost and it's going to work its way down into all those cracks and crevices it's going to get inside of all that humus and it's going to start growing um, what you're going to see is you're going to start to see kind of uh, when you notice it's working you're going to see kind of like a white fuzz like you do mold and that mold is actually mycelium. That white fuzz is mycelium spores, and that's going to start colonizing the compost, and th that's the only way you're really going to know it's starting to work. Um, another thing you can do is after a few weeks, you can peel back some of the compost and see if some of it's gotten deeper, because sometimes it's not on the surface. Sometimes it's actually uh, deeper in, 
and when you peel it back, you're gonna see some of that mycelium starting to colonize as well. And then uh, once you obviously see the blooms, in a little while, you're going to actually start to see mushrooms growing. Assuming you don't harvest this for the fungally inoculated compost, you can actually um, you can actually wait till the mushrooms grow, and then you can have some mushrooms to eat. Again, make sure you know how to identify mushrooms. All right, so that's all I got, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed. I know it wasn't as short as I thought it would, but you know, there's a lot of details that I want to make sure I get out there, so you have the highest chance of success for doing this kind of stuff. So hopefully you enjoyed, and. Uh, Hopefully you try it. Definitely, I recommend trying it. It's a lot of fun and it's really beneficial for the garden and especially if it's free. I mean, you've really got nothing to lose. So, awesome. I hope you all enjoyed. Definitely uh, click that like button, click that subscribe button if you haven't already and I'll talk to you all later. Hopefully you all are growing bigger going home. I'll see you guys later. Bye.